Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome to History and Government Lesson. Uh, today we are going to study on a topic entitled Establishment of Colonial Rule in Kenya. Establishment of Colonial Rule in Kenya. That is the topic that we are continuing to study. And remember, we started by uh, looking back and seeing how the British or the, the, the process of the partitioning of East Africa and finally how the British started to occupy the African or the Kenyan territory. We also uh, learned that they used uh, company rule to establish the uh, rule, uh, which, was, uh, which company uh, was uh, used by the British to establish the uh, authority and control in Kenya. I hope you are able to remember, we said it is the Imperial British East, Af Af East African Company. And we studied how it established the, the control, how it started um, getting uh, areas and investing in the Kenyan territory. But uh, at some point, it was overwhelmed. It, the, the duty became too much because the land was quite big and they did not have enough resources. So the government of Britain or the British government decided to send in uh, uh, more officials to act directly on behalf of the uh, British government. And that is how they ended up uh, establishing and occupying the Kenyan territory. So in, uh, in the last lesson, we learned how the Kenyans reacted, how the Kenyan societies reacted to the occupation of the British, the response of the Kenyan communities to British occupation. And we said the societies reacted in three ways. Can you be able to remember the three ways in which the Kenyan societies were able to react against the uh, colonial or the British people? The three ways. We said there are three of them. Three ways. Which are they? The first one we said it is resistance. Resistance. They resisted. They stood and fought against the British and uh, we mentioned several communities. We also mentioned that um, they reacted by collaborating, that is uh, cooperating with the British people. And then we said there are other communities that had mixed reactions. Mixed reactions means some were resisting while others were cooperating at the same time. And uh, in our last lesson, we started uh, engaging into the resistance as a response so number one we are studying resistance to british rule that is the subtopic that you're having and the community that we are studying is the resistance of the nandi so number one the first community is the nandi we said there are other communities apart from nandi that resisted. Are you able to remember them? The communities that resisted the British colonial rule. The first one that we are studying are the Nandi. We also mentioned they are the Bukusu. Uh, we also shall see the Agiriyama. And then finally we shall look at the Somali. So, But we have started with the Nandi. And we said in our last lesson we studied the causes. What were the things that forced the Nandi to resist against the British rule. We said there are several reasons. The major one being the pride, the pride of the Nandi. They thought they are superior. They had conquered most of their neighbors. So they had a sense of pride. They were naturally uh, people who were warlike. So they were able to defeat most of the uh, neighbors. Also, they had a very uh, strong leadership that uh, uh, galvanized the people and encouraged them to fight against the British. And then the other reason is that they, they 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 did not like the color. They were they, 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 the color of the British made them to 
uh, fight against them. They were considered to be like devils. Also, Kimnyole's prophecy played another role or uh, was another cause of the people of uh, the Nandi fighting against the British. He also mentioned that uh, the land alienation or the laws of land was uh, a, a cause for them to fight. Also, they had a uh, 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 military. They had military training. Most of their army was military, uh, was well trained and disciplined, which encouraged them to fight against the uh, the British, among many other uh, causes that we, we we mentioned. So, in our today's lesson, we are going now to look further and make another step forward and uh, ask ourselves: How did the war progress? How did they resist against the uh, the the British, how did what inst uh, how did the war begin, and how were they defeated? If uh, at all they were defeated, so we're going to look at the cause of the Nand resistance, the cause of the Nandi resistance, the cause of the Nandi resistance, and the first thing we are supposed to, uh, we, we we learn is that. It started in 1895. That is when the resistance started. And it started after a uh, British, uh, certain British known as Andrew Dick. Andrew Dick uh, killed, attacked and killed two Nandi warriors. Two Nandi warriors who had strayed into his camp this was a british trader so in his uh, in his camp he he met some two nandi warriors who had uh, who are working in his camp and decided to kill them so uh, and decided to kill uh, actually this is to to kill decided to uh, uh, kill the two uh, nandi warriors so uh, this, when he attacked and killed these warriors, this angered the whole community. The whole community now, or, or the other people, decided to retaliate against the British, and they in turn killed the Nandi. The Nandi killed another British, or another British trader who was known as uh, Peter West. Peter. West. So immediately after Andrew Dick attacked and killed the two Nandi warriors, the community resulted or uh, retaliated by killing another trader who was known as Peter West. So that sparked the bad blood or sparked the, 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 the killings or the, the resistance of the Nandi. Immediately after that, the Nandi also continued with a series of attacks on the British traders. So there was a series of attacks. They constantly attacked the British traders who are coming from the coast as they go towards uh, Uganda that, uh, that, that, that was engaging in the, uh, in, in the trade. So every now and then the, the, the Nandi could... Uh, stage or mount attacks against these traders and, uh, uh, and it, it happened that each and every time they attacked the british could send expeditions that is an army or a people to try and quench or fight against the people so this happened by them so the british we are saying decided uh, british sends expeditions expeditions and these are organized armies to go and try and fight against the nandi who every and now and then are attacking the traders on the uh, trading activities but something uh, to, to 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 the detriment of the british every time they spend or they send an expedition it was unable to conquer the Nandi, because the Nandi were well trained. Remember, I said they had a very strong army based on uh, the initiation. Each and every time the young men were initiated, they were called into uh, 
into the army to serve into the army and they became very disciplined so they every time the british was able to send an expedition after an attack it was always uh defeated so these are uh, continued that uh, in 1897 uh, that is two years later in 1897 that is two years later uh the nandi made a very uh, severe attack on the british male party british male party this was a group of traders that uh, were going on with their trading activities but the nandi decided to uh, to fight or decided to uh, to attack them and these really angered the british so they decided to bring a very uh, or a, or, or, a, or even more punitive expeditions uh, to fight against the nandi but uh, in the same way the first one had uh, had 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 started or had been unable to be quenched the british were defeated why because immediately the british were bringing their armies or their uh, soldiers to fight against the, uh, the nandi the nandi could just attack them and then go and hide in the terrain hide in the forest and remember this is their homeland they understand their terrain better than the uh, than the british so they could easily attack and then go and hide uh, against uh, against the british so the british could not make significant impact they could not attack or be able to uh, defeat the nandi warriors and because they were they could easily sleep they have just attacked them and when they ran away you could not know where the british could not know uh, what had happened this happened even uh, continued even in 18 uh, 90, in 1899 when uh, there was building this happened there was uh, uh, when the, the building of the railway uh, reached the reached the nandi territory the attacks by the nandi intensified at this period remember in the kimyoles prophecy as i had mentioned earlier he had seen uh that, 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 that the prophet had seen uh, uh an iron snake he had seen a very big snake coming into the land of the nandi so when the nandi saw the railway entering their territory they saw what had been prophesied earlier by Kim Nyole. And these uh, made them even more furious because they had discredited uh, Kim Nyole as being, uh, as being a, a witch or being, uh, his prophecy not being true. But now they saw it coming. They saw the rail entering their land. So they intensified their fight. They now could fight even more because they did not want that rail to pass through their territory remember we said the nandi are a very uh, they were very uh, proud they had prestige they believed they are the best and they had the right to own that land and nobody else could be able to do anything uh, on that land without their consent so they intensified their fights during the, the, this year and so the british uh, tried to uh, get uh, the Indians and the Swahilis and the Maasai together with some of the Buganda auxiliaries. Those are people that were hired to come and fight on behalf of the British. So the British tried to organize a very large expedition, especially during this time when they are building the railway. Remember the railway is the center stone it, it could have eased the movement of raw materials so they really needed this railway to go uh, to those interior parts so they tried to bring other people and i have mentioned they tried to uh, bring the indians indian the swahili soldiers and also hired the uh, the baganda Baganda together with the Maasai uh, auxiliaries. These are hired 
uh, hired hands to come and fight. But even so, they still were unable. They were still unable to uh, to get, or they were still unable to uh, continue or to be able to fight effectively or stop the Nandi from attacking them. So they became frustrated. But uh, the British government at that time sent a colonel or a, or an army uh, commander who is known as Colonel Colonel um, Menez Colonel Me uh, quite a, a name here. Colonel Menez again, right? This was a colonel that uh, was sent or that was leading the expeditions that were sent. Uh, actually, this was in 1900. So when this man came, he discovered that the reason why the Nandi are fighting so furiously and they have been every expedition that they have tried to bring against the Nandi was being quenched or was being defeated. He discovered that the strength or the the, the the strength of the Nandi was based on the or coyote or coyote who was the uh, the religious leader who was the overall leader of the Nandi so he was the chief strategist of the of the Nandi community he was the the, the source of the strength of the Nandi so he when he discovered the Okoriot at that time, who was known as Koitalel, Koitalel Arab, Samway, right? And Arab means the son of, right? So the Okoriot at that time, Koitalel Arab Samway, this is an I, Samway. So this man discovered that. Koitalel Arab Samoy, who was the leader of the Nandi people at that time, was the reason why the Nandi were so united. Was the reason why the Nandi could not be defeated. Because he was the chief strategist. Remember, he was the religious leader. So he made or brought all the people of the Nandi together. So what this man did, he decided to trick the uh, Koitalel Arab Samoy with the other leaders into a meeting in the pretense of uh, trying to discuss out or getting a, a way out. But what he had in, in intention was to execute and actually he executed Koitalel Arab Samoy along with some other leaders. So this demoralized. It demoralized demoralized the warriors. The warriors who are fighting because now the leader or the strength the centerpiece the cornerstone of their resistance has been captured and executed and that was the strategy of this colonel so he he discovered that the community was galvanized or was united by the institution of the coyote and the leader then who was taking the coyote at that time was quite a Samoy. so he tricked him together with some leaders, into a peace meeting. And then he captured Koitalel Samoy and executed him. So that really demoralized the warriors. They could not now have a united attack against the British. They had now been disheartened. Their hearts were broken because their leader, the one who was leading them, the one who was giving them the courage to go and fight, had now been executed so the british took that opportunity and in 1905 immediately after the execution of the uh the koitalera of samoy the coyote at that time though they continued to fight but they did not fight with the vigor that had so in 1905 they uh the british sent the biggest expedition ever they had uh, ever amassed. They, uh, they, they were able to get 1,500. They were able to get 1,500 Indian, Indian 
and uh, Swahili Swahili soldiers uh, to come and uh, and uh, and uh, fight against the Nandi also they also included the some Somali them some Somali soldiers right and then apart from the 1500 soldiers that uh, were sent at that time they also hired 1300 auxiliaries to come and also join in the expeditions apart from that they also armed they had 900 armed porters these were the people who were carrying the trading items from the interior into the coast the porters so they armed them and also they had 10 machine guns 10 machine guns and two armored trains armored trains so this was the biggest expedition that the british had amassed at uh, uh, against any community because now the nandi had become too much so the british decided to get uh, the largest army the largest expedition that uh, they could get so you can imagine all these people are directed against one community against the nandi who have been uh, fighting for them actually for a very long time so uh, though the nandi at this time they are demoralized remember that they are now demoralized because their leader has been executed and now uh, and uh, the leaders and the the leaders are unable to continue uh, the, uh, the the ones who are uh, available at that time were could not uh, effectively take the opposition of the or coyote so the nandi though they tried to fight bravely they were defeated in this year uh, in this year and they uh, were finally taken over uh, their land was finally taken over by the british so the nandi is one community in kenya that gave out a very long resistance they resisted the british for quite a long time they put up a fight that the british did not expect it was uh it it you can see it started in 19 uh, in 1895 and actually ended in 1905 that is 10 years of continued fighting that was very expensive for the british but for them they were in their land because they had understood their land so you ask yourself why what enabled the british or the the, the nandi to uh, to give such a long uh, resistance so reasons for the long resistance number one they they, they understood their terrain so that is one one reason uh, why they put on a very long resistance reasons for long resistance so number one uh, i've said the terrain worked to their advantage the terrain so the mountainous terrain they are this is a highland this is the rift valley they have high hills they have uh, valleys so they understood their terrain very well as opposed to the british who were visitors in that area and even the uh the the the, the, the swahili and the uh the the swahili and the somali and the indians who are coming to help the british could not be able to understand that terrain so that gave them an advantage another reason why they put on a long resistance was the army they had a very large army that was provided uh, by the uh, ASET system. Every now, every uh, every time they had initiation, they recruited new army members, and the army was very disciplined, just like that of the British. They were very disciplined and well trained because they took a lot of time, and also they had a constant supply of food, a constant supply of food. They had constant supply of food. They had mixed economy. They were farmers and livestock keepers. Though with the British coming to attack them, at some point they used the scorched at policy where they could uh, burn down and destroy the Nandi food. They had surplus food because they were livestock 
keeper so that enabled them to continue fighting and also they had experience they had military military experience they had military experience that enabled them to continue fighting they had fought a lot of battles they had uh, subdued all their neighbors including the maasai that came to help the uh, the british so they had amassed a lot of experience in the uh, fighting the next thing uh, was that they had pride they did not believe that they could be defeated and it was their culture to continue to uh, to to uh, to uh, get wins in every battle. So they were a very proud people. They were a people who were susceptible to war. They could not accept any kind of defeat. And then uh, the second last, they had able leadership. Able leadership. Koitarel Alap Samway, who was the Orkoyot at that time, provided a very solid leadership. He galvanized the whole community. The warriors together with the communities came together to fight against the British. And then lastly, the climate was to their advantage. The cold climate. Uh, the British could not withstand the climate uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Rift Valley. So that gave the, uh, the Nandi a comparative advantage over the British. So... Today we have learned about the cause of the resistance of uh, the Nandi and how we have interrogated into details how they fought against the British and how finally they were defeated in 1905. And I've also explained the different reasons why the Nandi were able to give such a prolonged period of fighting. They fought for a very long time. So that uh, 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 brings us now to uh, the end of our lesson but before we end allow me to give you this revision question uh, allow me to give you this revision question you just write it here revision question and the question is state and explain the reasons why the Nandi put up a prolonged a prolonged resistance state and explain state and explain the reasons why the nandi put up a prolonged resistance state and explain the reasons why the nandi put up a prolonged resistance so those uh, that is the question i want you to attempt uh, uh, at your free time uh, um, I, I encourage you not to check on what you have or, or on your notes that you have made. Just try and remember uh, what we have learned. And with that, we've come to the end of our lesson today. Until the next time we shall meet, it's bye-bye.